A blessed morning to everyone, and we welcome you to the 10:30 online service of Bread from Heaven Christian Fellowship. As we prepare our hearts to hear from the Word of God today, we would like to give you our announcements for this week's activities. The next prayer service for Wednesday will be for the churches that belong to our ministry partner, the Center for Community Transformation, or CCT. The prayer service is also a good time for us to pray for the church in our personal concerns. We invite all of you to join us on August 18 at 8 p.m. via Zoom for a time of prayer and fellowship. We will open the room by 7.30 p.m. The Marriage Keepers in Bread or MKB and the Men in Bread or MIB would like to invite everyone to attend their next fellowship entitled Higher Calling, taken from Hebrews 11.1. Our speaker for this activity will be Elder Sam Galvez. This will be on August 20 at 8 p.m. via Zoom and will also be streamed on our church social media channel. This is for everyone, so we encourage you to get in touch with the core groups of the MKB or MIB for details on how to join. We'd like to remind our men as well that the next MIB fellowship will be on August 21, Saturday at 7 a.m. via Zoom. We invite the men and bread to sharpen one another in fellowship and in study of God's word as you fulfill your role that God has given as heads of your households. Please contact Brother Henry Go and Pastor Vic San Juan for details on how to join. The Women of Bread, or Womb, will have their monthly fellowship on August 28 at 3 p.m. with the theme, Towards a Better Wellness, and our speaker will be Dr. Maluma Lapas. This is open to all our ladies in the church 18 years of age and above. We will also be streaming this on the Facebook page of The Womb. Please contact Sister Winnie Dumlao and the core team of The Womb for more details on how to join. Reminding all the teens and their parents that they will be having their fellowship later at 2 to 4 p.m. via Zoom. This is open to all our children ages 10 to 14 years old and we encourage the parents to join as well. Please feel free to contact Sister Cecil Arisgado or Jeremy Santiago for questions and more details. Reminding all our Kaagapay as well that they will be having their Bible study later at 3 p.m. via Zoom. This is open to all Kaagapay and we are encouraging you to join us later for fellowship. Please feel free to contact Sister Lila Ibitia or Sister Janet Brambilia for details. The Young Professionals, or Y-Pro, will be having their next fellowship on August 21, 8 p.m. via Zoom. This is open to all the working professionals of the church and we encourage everyone to join us for a fellowship and study of God's Word. Please contact Attorney Paul Castillo or Sister Marvi Tolentino Uy for more details. We would like to remind you of these weekly activities that are open to all. Our doctrinal classes cover the Heidelberg Catechism, Belgic Confession, and Canons of Dort. These are designed for us to understand and apply what we believe as a church into our daily lives. Not only that, our weekly ministry fellowship gives us the opportunity to catch up with each other. Please feel free to contact our church pastors and staff for more details. You can all see these activity details plus more on our Facebook page and the revamped Bread from Heaven Christian Fellowship website. Please visit www.breadfromheaven.org to know more about our church. Here, you may see and view the previous sermons and services, read the articles of faith that define what we believe in as a church, learn how to give your tithes online, and many more. So once again, please visit www.breadfromheaven.org. We would also like to remind you that our church has a channel on YouTube. Please subscribe so you can watch our previous services and be notified when our Sunday service premieres live. God bless you and your family this week and we pray you stay safe. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the service with an attitude of worship, thankful to our God for His presence, provision, and protection.
morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Our um, physical uh, worship service this August uh, did not post through because of our current situation. We are now under EC, uh, ECQ. But um, despite of that, we uh, go on with our virtual fellowship, virtual uh, worship service um, today. And uh, first, I'll be reading from uh, Genesis um, chapter 29, verses 31 to 35. And the word of the Lord says, Now the Lord saw that Leah was in love, and he opened her womb, womb, but Raquel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son, and named him Reuben, for, his, for she said, Because the Lord has seen my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. Then she conceived again, and bore a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. So she named him Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will, be, will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, his name... Um, he was named Levi, and she conceived again, and bore a son, and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah, then she stopped bearing. Yes, um, just like uh, Leah, she uh, longed to... Uh, um, that she'll be accepted. Especially by her husband. And uh, she was so pleased that she bore him uh, sons. And uh, she named them was uh, Reuben, Simeon, then Le uh, Levi. Then on her last, uh, on her fourth son, she uh, gave uh, praises to the Lord God and uh, so she named her fourth son uh, uh, Judah meaning uh, praising the Lord God so we see here that uh, Leah when she uh, gave uh, honor to the Lord God in a uh, she praised him, uh, the Lord God. That's the time that uh, the Lord God was uh, pleased and uh, therefore had uh, blessed the uh, uh, Leia and uh, the things that uh, she wanted to be accepted, the Lord God was pleased with her. And she was accepted, and uh, we know that was uh, from Judah. That uh, from that uh, from the uh, from the children of uh, was uh, Judah. Then uh, uh, we know that. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ also was uh, born uh, through that uh, lineage from Judah. So we praise the Lord God for that. And um, was, uh, let us pray. Our God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for your loving goodness that despite this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we are experiencing uh, in our country and even the whole world. We thank you so much that uh, 
the other who loves us, who protects us, and uh, who provides for all our needs. We praise and worship you, Lord God. And even as we come before you, Lord, forgive us and cleanse us of any sin and shortcomings that we may have done and committed unto you, so that we may be worthy to come before your holy presence, our holy and mighty God. Yes, Lord, forgive us and cleanse us of any sin and unrighteousness that we may have done and committed unto you. Thank you so much, Lord, for your loving goodness. Of course, uh, the uh, gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ that you have given us. We thank you so much, Lord God. We praise you and worship you. We honor you, Lord. And uh, we continue to ask from you, Lord, for your continued uh, protection and guidance uh, upon us. We ask for good health and strength every day of our lives, our God, and especially for our dear brethren who are sick and especially those who have this COVID-19 virus your protection be upon them your healing touch Lord may you give them Lord God and may your name be honored and glorified Lord and Lord God even as we go on with our worship service this morning we lift up to you Lord our um, worship team as they lead us to uh, offering to you songs of praises in honor to your holy and mighty name our holy and mighty God thank you for blessing them with uh, uh, such uh, abilities to lead us in uh, singing these uh, hymns and praises to you our holy and mighty God Lord God we will, we will lift up to you our dear pastor who will be uh, delivering to us your message uh, this morning may you speak through him may you use him Lord God to uh, proclaim um, uh, the uh, messages the things that you wanted us to know uh, this time our God so Lord may you uh, speak uh, through his lips that um, the things that he will be delivering us uh, this morning will uh, be um, glorifying to your holy and mighty name Lord God so Lord God we continue to uh, praise you and worship you and uh, just give you honor and glory to God and uh, yes Lord uh, uh, be uh, glorified in our midst even this time Lord and uh, Lord uh, we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen Amen All praises and glory to Jesus Christ our Lord Colossians 3 15 to 16 says let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Amen. So let's begin our worship with singing and praises to our God. forevermore. 
Sacrifice our lives are not our 
Good day, everyone. It's great, again, to be sharing your word to everyone. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again, O God, for this special privilege that you had given uh, to your servant to share your word this morning. O God, I am already weak, Father, but you are my strength. So, Father God, I pray that you guide me as you allowed me, O God, to deliver your word. Lord, give me your strength. Empower me, O God, by the power of your might. Lord, I also pray, O God, that you open the hearts and the minds of everyone so that, Lord, your word will dwell in their hearts, O God, and that it will bear fruit to everlasting for the glory and for the praise of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. People of God, this Sunday, let us continue with our theme, Covenant Family, which we are revisiting. This Sunday, our theme is Covenant Marriage, Godly Submission. Husbands and wives, are your marriages covenantal? Maybe. For some, we need to define some important words. What is covenant? Ordinarily, covenant among created beings is a pledge or agreement among two or more people for the performance of certain tasks usually under oath. Example of this are notarized contract among individuals. A marriage contract is one such covenant. In a special way, in the divine covenant, the covenant of God with his elect and chosen people is his promise to be their God and they are his people. In Genesis, Chapter 17, verse 7. And may I read Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. I will establish my covenant between me and you. And that is Abraham. And your descendants after you throughout their generations. As an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. The covenant of God with Abraham and with all his spiritual distance, uh, descendants, which are the believers of Christ, is his divine sovereign will alone without the concurrence of Abraham or his descendants. Further, what are covenant families and covenant marriages? Covenant families are families with covenant marriages. Covenant marriages are major marriages where God joins a man and a woman whom he chose together in holy matrimony to become one flesh till physical death of either. Covenant marriages is differentiated from other marriages where it is not God who joins a man or a woman in matrimony, but man, the couple themselves. The couple is joined together in marriage by men, like a judge, even a pastor, or a priest, if not done in Christ Jesus. Covenant families are families who belong to God in Christ Jesus under the guidance, counsel, and leading of the Holy Spirit. Covenant marriages is in covenant families obey the scripture. They love the Lord with all their hearts, with all their minds, with all their strength. Their lives, body and soul are fully submitted to the Lord. One of the most important quality of a covenant family ordained by God in the scripture is submission. It is submission. 
Among other parts of the scripture, we learn this in our text, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 21 up to chapter 6, verse 4. And let us read together. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 up to 6, up to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Verse 21. And submit yourselves to one another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the family as Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. Verse 24. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Verse 28. So husband also ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife, his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ, who also does the church, because we are parts of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his, leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, as for you individually, each husband is to love his, his wife or wife uh, the same as himself, and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. Chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may turn out well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Verse 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Praise is the reading of the living word of God. The scripture, this scripture, models covenant marriage with the church. As Christ is head of the church, the church submits to Christ. So the husband is the so the husband is the head of the wife and the children. So the wife and the children must submit to the husband. Our proposition is God ordains the covenant family that the head is the husband and that the wife and children must submit to him in obedience to the Lord. According to our text, Ephesians chapter 5.21 up to chapter 6 verse 4, what do we learn about godly submission in the family? Yes, what do we learn about godly submission in the family? We learn the following. Number one, the family members must submit to one another. And we read this in verse 21. Submit yourselves to one another in the fear of Christ. What does submit to one another mean? Submitting to one another does not mean it's one ordering one another and everyone obeys. No, no, that would be chaos. Rather, submitting to one another means that each member of the body, the leaders, and the subordinates or followers consider the good of everyone for the general good of the body. All members of a covenant family is as true to the church of Christ Jesus, whom the Holy Spirit is given and filled 
must serve one another for the good of everyone. For the good of the whole family, as for the good of the church, for the glory of God. We must not be influenced by the world. The world does not belong to Jesus. It is without the Holy Spirit. The rule of the world is all on selves first before others. All selves first before others. People resist submitting to one another. People resist giving up self-interest for the good of the community in general. We see this in global scene. Bigger and more powerful countries grabbing islands belonging to smaller and weaker nations. We see this in governments, even in our Philippine government. We hear of government officials serving their own self-interest first at the disadvantage of the people that they govern. They steal from government resources that are intended for the good of country and people. They receive bribes to grant a special unlawful favor for their equally corrupt clients. We also see this in some private enterprises where owners and officials exploit their employees paying them substandard wages or unsafe conditions just to save on expenses to add to their personal profit and benefit. We also see this in the continued proliferation of drug in the country and the whole world. The drug manufacturers and dealers do not mind the destruction of lives of users for as long as they wreak, they wreak huge profit from it. We also see this in many broken families where either the husband or the wife or the children pursue their own self-interest first above the interest or good of the family. Either husband or wife pursue their lust of their flesh outside of marriage, breaking the marriage covenant to the destruction of the family. We also see this in motorcycle riders in tandem snatching bags and cell phones. We also see this in many people refusing to obey and submit to COVID-19 safety protocol. People refuse to, fa to wear face masks, face shields, and proper distancing, which are meant to protect not only themselves, but other people for the good of every citizen for the country as a whole. Truly, people of God, the cases of the work of the evil one for people to serve their own self-interest first before the good of others is innumerable. Thank God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. This is not so with the church and with the covenant families of covenant marriages. God, in Christ Jesus, by the counsel and work of the Holy Spirit in the church and in covenant families and marriages, members, members submit to one another for the good of one another of the whole body. The covenant family has a common standard of living, this scripture. They live by the word of God. Their model of serving one another is Christ as in Philippians chapter 2, 5 to 8, and may I read. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a bond servant and being born in the likeness of man. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on the cross. Jesus Christ, 
who is God in heaven, submitted to the will of God the Father. He came to earth, became man, not to be served, but to serve, even humiliated by man and dying and pouring his precious blood on the cross to save his people from sin. Like our Lord, we must serve one another for the good of everyone and for the good of our family, the church and the church, the body of Christ. Further, we must trust God that he is working for the good of their family in his promise in Romans chapter 8 and 28, a very memorable verse. And we know that God cause, causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his promise. Truly, people of God, each member of the covenant family must submit to one another, each considering and working for the good of each one and, and for the family. Further, number two, wives must submit to their husbands. And we read this in uh, verses chapter 2, 22 to 21st. Verse uh, 24, verse 22, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the family as Christ also is head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husband in everything. Wives must submit to their own husbands in obedience to the Lord. In the covenant family, the husband is the head and the wife must submit to him. It is the purpose of God since creation that the husband is head of the wife. We learn in uh, Genesis chapters 1 to chapter 3 that God created man first from the dust of the earth and breathed unto it to become a living being, the man Adam. God assigned to him to subdue the earth and rule over every fish of the earth, of the sea, every bird of the sky, and every animal and creeping uh, beings on earth. In this work, God recognized the need of the of the man Adam of a suitable helper. God drew a rib from the man Adam and made it into a woman, Eve. God, God brought Eve to Adam and united them and made them one flesh. God indeed is the author of marriage. He designed marriage for the man, the husband, to be the head and the wife, the woman, the helper. The woman must submit to the husband. Yes, the woman must submit to the husband. But as we know from the scripture, the evil one, Satan, in the form of a serpent, usurped and falsified the will of God. He went to the wife, Eve, and tempted her to control her husband, Adam. Satan tempted Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, which God forbid Adam to eat. For if he eats, eats of the fruit, he surely die. Eve succumbed to the temptation of Satan and ate of the fruit. She gave the forbidden fruit to Adam to eat. And Adam submitted to Eve and he too ate the fruit. They disobeyed God and committed the first sin which they inherited to all of humanity. Since then, in sin, 
wives desire to control their husbands and resist submitting to them. But thank God, praise Jesus, covenant marriages with their children are forgiven and washed clean of their sin by the blood of Jesus, which he shed on the cross for the forgiveness of sins of those who believe and receive him. God was God wife, God was the wives clean of all their sins, including the sin of resisting to submit to their husband, even the sin to control their man. Covenant wives became new creation, the old is gone, the new has come. Wives of covenant families must submit to your husband because it is the will of God and purpose for the husband to be the head of the covenant family. Your husband is your head together with your children as Christ is head of the church. Headship and submission to the covenant family is not a matter of who is stronger, who is more personable, who is more intelligent, and who has more income. The headship of the family by the husband and submission to him to him by the wife and the children is ordained by God, is ordained by God. As a covenant family, it must be so in obedience to God. It does not mean that the wife and children remain silent and just let the husband decide things concerning the family. No, the family must have an open communication headed by the husband. The family concerns must be discussed openly and courses of actions must be by unanimous agreement. Truly, according to the will of God, the wife must submit to her husband as her head, as Jesus Christ is head of the church. Further, Point number three, husbands must love their wives. And we learn this in chapter 5, 25 to 33. Number one, husbands must love their wives as Christ loved the church. And we read this in verses 25 to 27. And may I read verse 25, husbands, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle and any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Husbands, husbands, must submit to wives in a greater way. He must love his wife just as Christ so loves the church. God is love. John 3, 16a witnesses, God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, Christ Jesus to it. And so Christ too demonstrated his great love for the church. I repeat what I said earlier. As God in heaven, Christ Jesus humbled himself even to the point of humiliation to become man. He suffered, died, and poured his precious blood on the cross for the church so that the church is washed and forgiven of her sin to become holy and blameless. Only Christ, only Christ can do that. Husbands cannot do the same to his wife. Only Christ can save his people from sin. Husbands cannot. But husbands must lead his wife in her growth to Christ-likeness. There are countless ways for a husband to lead his wife to Christ-likeness, but we can only present 
six in our message. Number one, the husband must be a true believer of Christ himself. Because a blind cannot lead a blind. As we read this in Matthew chapter 15 verses 14b. And if a person who is blind guides another who is blind, both, both will fall into a pit. The husband must be a child of God, regenerated and made spiritually alive by the Holy Spirit. He must be Christ-centered in order to lead his wife to Christ-likeness. He must know the true God and the Lord of the Scripture. He must love the Lord with all his heart, with all his might, and with all his soul. He must ground himself in the scripture and be obedient to follow. Second, the husband must live and walk in the spirit, not by the spirit of the wine. And we read this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, which says, And do not God get drunk with wine, in which there is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Husbands, do not get drunk with alcoholic drinks. Man is prone to drink alcoholic drinks. That is why bars profil, uh, profil, proliferate to cater to drinkers. Drunkenness causes loss of self-control on man, which most often leads the drunk to sinful acts, to debauchery, even to the point of being unfaithful to their wives. Truly, covenant husbands must never get drunk with alcoholic drinks. Instead, as the word of God commands, be controlled by the Holy Spirit, which God feels in everyone who believes and receives Jesus Christ. Covenant husbands, as is true to every man and woman, we who believe and receive Jesus Christ are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. Indeed, we are His temple. Let us all submit to His leading. Let us always pray that we are always discerning to His counsel by the will of God for, it, uh, for us, including loving our wives as Christ loved His church. Number three, or third, the husband must protect his wife from committing sin. The husband must protect her wife from committing sin. And for one, he must never allow his wife to head over him. He must never allow his wife to head over him. As we learned earlier, the will of God is for husbands to be the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. A wife heading over her, her husband is sin. It is sin. The husband should never allow his wife to head over him. The husband must remain the head of the family always. The fourth, the husband must lead his whole family, his wife and children, to grow spiritually, to grow to Christ-likeness. He must lead his family altar to worship. He must lead his family to study the Word of God. He must lead his family in obedience to God and the Word by his own life. By his own life. He must walk his talk. He must lead by his example. As Christ provides for the basic needs of the church, the husband must provide the needs of his family, his wife and children. And we learn this in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. God wills that the husband must provide the needs of his family. Despite his wife 
being able to earn, the husband must work to provide the needs of the family, even through painful toil or sweat in his blood. As we learn this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 and 19. And sixth, the husband must express his love for his wife verbally by acts of endearment and by kind and or kind once in a while, but continuously. Often and continually, the husband must say to your wife, I love you. Often and uh, continually, the husband must caress your, husband, your wives. Often and continually, husband, give your wife flowers or other kinds of gifts. Truly, husbands must love their wives as Christ loves the church. Further, the husband must love his wife as he loves his own body. The husband must love his wife as he loves his own body. And we read this in uh, verses 28 to 33. So husbands also ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ and thus the church, because we are parts of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his wife, his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, as for you individually, its husband is to love his own wife the same way as himself. And the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. Everyone loves his, his or her own body. To the worldly, they also love their bodies, but it is for self, for their own self-interest, for their own selfish reasons, often at the disadvantage of others. Me first, before others. All this leads to sin, leading to the destruction and eternal death. On the other hand, covenant people, covenant husbands, love their bodies not for the self-interest, self but for the love of Christ. They know from the scripture that their whole being, body and soul, were spiritually dead. But by the grace of God in Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they were saved, regenerated, and made spiritually alive. They are no longer, they no longer their own bodies. I no longer own my bodies. But body and soul, in life and in death, their whole being belongs to Christ. I belong to Christ, body and soul. Their bodies are gifts of God to them. For the love of Christ, they care for their bodies. For the love of Christ, I care for my body. As God, as good stewards of Christ, we love and care for the only body which God has given to us in Christ Jesus. So, for the love of Christ, covenant husbands love their bodies. As covenant husbands love their bodies in Christ, so covenant husbands must love their wives as well. The wife is gift of God to a husband. As a hu as husband loves and cares for his body in Christ, so a husband must love and care for his wife. As husband desires to be joyful, 
he must not allow his wife, uh, he must not cause sadness to come to her, to her wife, to his wife. As husband, do not want to, want to suffer pain in his body, he must not cause pain to his wife. As a husband wants to look handsome, he must keep his wife always beautiful and lovely. Truly, covenant husband must love their wives as they love their own bodies. What have we learned so far? We learned that number one, we must submit to one another. Number two, wives must submit to their husband. And number three, wives must love their uh, husband must love their wives. Further, and the last point, children must submit, obey, and honor their parents. And we read this in verses 1 to 3. Number one, children must obey their parents. Children must obey their parents in the Lord. And we, we read this in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children are commanded in the scripture to obey their parents. Unfortunately, many parents, especially the worldly, never teach their children to obey. Indeed, many parents obey their parents. Children. Many parents obey their children. Children of these par children of these parents learn their ways of living by what they see their worldly parents are doing and from their worldly environment. Children learn to quarrel. Uh, children learn to quarrel and fight from the quarreling and fighting of their parents. Children learn to be cruel to others from the cruelty of their parents to them. Children learn to commit sin from the sin that their parents are committing. Children learn vices from the vices of their parents. They learn to disobey the government by the disobedience, the disobedience of their parents. Oh, people of God, it is countless, it is countless to mention how children learn sinful ways from sinful parents. Thank and praise the Lord. Covenant parents obey the ways and the will of the Lord by the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Covenant parents teach their children to obey them in the way of the Lord, in the way of the Scripture. Their purpose for their children is their good according to the will of God. And in what ways do covenant parents teach their children to obey them? For a few. First, parents must teach their children what to obey. What to obey. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Parents must teach their children very early in their lives about God in the Scripture. God the Father, God the Son Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And to love Him with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their strength. Proverbs 22 verses, witnesses, train up your child in the way he should go. Even, even when he grows old, he will not abandon it. Parents, very early, bring your children to the church to experience the presence of God at the proper age. Enroll them in the Sunday school of the church for progressive and deeper learning about God and His will and obedience to the teaching of this scripture. Thank God for the Sunday school of Bread from Heaven, uh, Bread from Heaven Christian Fellowship. Parents, 
bring your children to the Sunday school. However, however, despite the right teachings, children still tend to disobey the standard and rules of the household. And why? Because they are born sinners as well because of the sin of Adam. They are up to sin and misbehave. Any and so any and every misconduct by the children must not be tolerated. The misconduct must be brought to the attention of the child and explained to him or her why the action is wrong. If discipline and punishment is necessary, explain the child as well. That discipline must, however, that discipline must not be done in anger, but must be done in love. That discipline must not be harsh as to cause prolonged pain or cause loss of self-esteem, but enough to be remembered so that the act of misconduct and other misconduct is not to be repeated. So, children, as commanded by God in His Word, submit and obey your parents. Further, children must honor their parents. And we read this in chapter 6, verse 1b. Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may turn out well for you and that you may live long on the earth. Children are commanded to honor their parents. Every child must respect one's parents, whether they are respectable and honorable or not. It is easy for children to honor parents who are honorable and respectable. However, it may be hard for children of dishonorable, immoral, indecent, unrighteous, and wicked parents, and much more for parents who hurt them, to honor their parents. It may be hard for them to honor their parents. But, there is no exception to the command. Every child is commanded to honor one's parent without, without exception. It may seem to be hard, but with the Holy Spirit in the covenant child, everything is possible. The Lord reminds us of the fifth of the Ten Commandments. The commandment in Exodus chapter at 20 verse 12, which reads, Honor your fathers and your mother, so that your days may be prolonged on the land which the Lord your God gives you. The fifth commandment is the only commandment with a promise. God promises in the commandment that you, children, must honor your parents, your father and mother so that it may turn out well for you that you may live long on this earth. Children, submit, obey, and honor your parents. In summary, what have we learned today? What have we learned today? Today, we learned about godly submission in the covenant family. God ordains the covenant family that the head is the husband and that the wife and children must submit to him in obedience to the Lord, in obedience to the Lord. In what ways does members of the covenant family submit? Number one, it must submit to one another. Each one must submit to one another. Number two, the wife must submit to her husband. Number three, the husband must love her wife. Number four, the children must submit, obey, and honor 
their parents. People of God, fellow Christians, fellow members and worshippers of bread from having Christian fellowship, as well as members of families. As commanded by God in the scripture, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, let us submit to one another, looking after the good of one another, helping one another or with our material as well as spiritual goods for the good of the church and families, for the glory of God. Wives, submit to your husbands as the head of your family because this is the will and design, and design of God since creation. Husbands, love your wives sacrificially as Christ loves the church. Children, obey and honor your parents. God promises you good lives. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you, O God, for reminding us, for teaching us to submit to one another as well as to submit to you, Jesus Christ. Lord, we as people, as in the world, resist submission. But, O oh God, this is your will that we must submit because it is for the good of us and for the good of the church and for the good of everyone. So, Father God, enable each and every one of us to obey you and to submit according to your will and according to your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. A blessed Sunday, everyone. I praise God for this beautiful day that He has given us and the privilege to worship Him together via online. As we continue to worship our God by the giving of our tithes and offerings, in your screen right now, you will see our church bank accounts where you can deposit our tithes and offerings. You may use GCAS or Paymaya. Just put the name Bread from Heaven. If you have any other concern, just call the church. The number is in your screen down below and our church staff would gladly assist you. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Let us now pray. Father God, we praise you and thank you for your word that we just heard. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we being part of your covenant family, each one of us should learn to submit to one another because this gives glory to your name. Husbands to love their wives and lead their families. Wives to submit to their husbands and children to obey and honor their parents. Thank you, Lord, for how you have designed your covenant family. And now, as we give back our tithes, which belongs to you, and our offerings, may this give glory to you, O God. I pray for the leaders of the church for wisdom, that this will be used for your ministry alone. Thank you, Lord, and all these things we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, let us come to the Lord in prayer, in closing our worship service. O oh God, we thank you again for this special privilege to worship you in spirit and in truth, even at this time of of um, COVID nineteen. O oh God, even in this time, O oh Lord, you allowed us to be gathered in worship by virtual worship. 
Thank you for this technology, O Lord. O God, we indeed thank you for that special privilege of hearing your word. Thank you, O God, for allowing your servant to deliver his word. Thank you, O God, for everyone to participate in this worship, to give you honor and glory. Lord, I thank you, O God, for everyone who participated in this worship. I pray for your special blessing to each and every one of them. Lord, I, so, I also live up to you, O God. Those who are suffering, those who are sick, those who are in need physically and spiritually. Lord, I pray that you empower your church members to help each other according to your will and your purpose. I pray, O Lord, that by your touch, O God, heal the sick and provide for the needy. Lord, I also thank you, O God, for everyone giving their tithes and offerings. Bless them more, bless them more, Father, as you promised. And I pray, O God, that uh, you guide the church so that all your resources will always be dispensed with according to your will and according to your purpose for the good of your church and for the good of your people, for the expansion of your kingdom. Lord, I also live up to you. Those who are celebrating their birthdays and their wedding anniversaries, I pray, O oh God, that you use the new lives that you had given to them for the expansion of your kingdom and for doing things for your glory. And Lord, I pray, especially for your own people, now people of God, receive the word of God. People of God, grace and grace be upon it's and everyone receive the blessing and the grace of the Lord. Walk in the spirit. Go make disciples of all nations. Go and spread the gospel. Go and let also bread from heaven Christian fellowship known. Again, Lord God, may you be praised always in everything that we do. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say, Amen and Amen.